This month on New Mexico in Focus, correspondent Gwyneth Dolan has been looking at the so-called brain drain and what it means for the future of our state. Her final interview is coming up in a few minutes, but first, a story in the Albuquerque Journal caught a lot of people's attention this week. It's not the first time that reporters and everyday New Mexicans have looked at Denver and asked how Albuquerque can better compete for economic opportunities in our region and in our state, certainly. Our line panelists are ready to weigh in with their reactions. I'm joined at the table this week by Dee Dee Feldman. She's a former state senator. Serge Martinez, his first time here. He's a professor at the UNM School of Law. Daniel Foley, former House Minority Whip. And Diane Snyder is back. She's a former state senator. And thank you for joining us, Dan. Good to see you. Thank you. It's Absolutely. So good to be here. Absolutely. Daniel, start with you. Start us off on this one. You do a lot of business in Denver and your, your work and such. We've talked a lot at this table over the months and, and uh, weeks about this situation of the brain drain. It, it, something, something's feeling a little bit different lately. That it, it, There's an initial wave that goes up there. We get it. People graduate. They want more opportunities. But something systemic has been happening. You see what I mean? The last yeah. decade or so, ten uh, percent I, 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 I growth rate up there is no joke. Yeah, no, I think, mm -hmm. and, and we're 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 losing people, and we're right. only six hour a six hour drive away. I mean, That's it's right. not like we're comparing what's happening in Albuquerque to San Diego or Dallas, Texas, That's or New right. York City. We're talking about there's literally no difference between Albuquerque and Denver, other than I think you could argue the weather's better in Albuquerque mm -hmm. than it is in Denver, right? Mm -hmm. The winters were not as bad. Right. Um, I, I just think, you know, the relationship that they've built with uh, the University of Colorado, the relationship between UC Boulder and Denver, that tech growth uh, compound pro prospects that they have there, right. the ability to retain those graduates when they stay there, the fact that there's multiple universities, whether it's the University of Denver, Regis, UC Boulder, I mean, to get advanced degrees that are highly uh, sought after That's degrees right. from these schools, That's right. and work. That's right. You know, there's a lot of work up there. And the other thing that seems to be interesting about Denver, in the time that we had an office up there and we're up there, there seems to be a real welcoming feeling of upward growth, right? Yes. You can talk to a lot of people that started out as a dishwasher and now they're this. They started yeah. out here. And, and and the other thing that they've done a really good job at Denver <laughs> doing is maintaining that Denver culture. I mean, at doing business up there, um, they know you're not from Denver. And they're, mm -hmm. you know, they're not the most welcoming. It's not like, oh yeah, we're ready to do business with anybody. They'll, sure. they'll go with the local guys over, right. um, over the out of town guys. And I think also there's been a real difference. You know, I, I, I'm not beating up on the, the rail runner. We've done that till the, you know, till we're blue in the face. Sure. But you know, we built a rail runner that runs between Albuquerque and Santa Fe, stops in out in the out of the way places, and they're building a train that runs from the airport to downtown, get you out to the shopping centers. Their, mm -hmm. their rail system gets you around the city, right. gets you get you that mobility. Right. And it's interesting because everything people want to say about Albuquerque, Denver is, I mean, it's it takes you forever to get from one side of Denver to the other. It's a spread out city. Right. You know, it's got a downtown, but it's got, it's got downtown Denver and literally quite a few ways away, it's got the tech center right. um, where they've had a lot of growth. So I, I think we should be looking towards them. I think that they're, they've had some very progressive uh, business ideas, and I'm not talking progressive from the political sense. Yeah. I think that they've done a good job with building. They've done a good job with attracting industry, mm -hmm. retaining industry. They've done a good job working around the rest of the state, realizing that Denver is sort of a mecca. That's right. um, and we and just it, it, and growth promotes growth. That's you know, right. And, and, and it happens, Didi, where you've got situations where, for example, I've got kids. My oldest just graduated from UNM. She loves Denver. Her and her friends is a quality of life issue. And I appreciated Gwyneth bringing this up in one of our brain drains. The crime is bad up there either. That's well, you know, that happens too. The, the idea when she was talking to the folks that, that chose to stay here, I found that segment very interesting, that folk, young people who had gone other places but then came back. Right. Do you know what I mean? It's very interesting, isn't it? I thought that was a terrific show, mm -hmm. and it gave me hope right. uh, for New Mexico. Uh, but what those uh, folks are saying is there's a reason to stay in New Mexico, That's right. but it's not an economic one. Mm -hmm. It's because there's a greater sense of community here. It's because there's family, it's small, there's connectedness, there's physical beauty. Of course, there's physical beauty in Colorado as well, but when a lot of, um, a lot of folks go there, they find that the cost of living is a lot more, housing That's is right. a problem, traffic is a problem, um, but I think, as Dan says, it is a more progressive place, and it's a more urban uh, lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't always appeal to New Mexicans. We're still kind of rooted in our rural traditions here. And, um, but I will say, I think with the legalization of marijuana 
in uh, Colorado, there's uh, hundreds and maybe thousands of young people that are now working in the marijuana industry that's right. That's right. in uh, in Colorado, and um, that's that's part of the trend. Although I thought it was interesting that it's not really just young people, the twenty-somethings that are going to uh, Denver and Colorado. It's the 54-year-olds, the 55-year-olds. Right. These are engineers. These are people in mid-career mm -hmm. that um, can't advance um, and uh, are sort of stalled. And uh, they're leaving. Uh, maybe that will create some new opportunities for people at the lower level That's in right. New Mexico. But we're just talking about a fewer number of jobs to start with. That's right. That's right. So that pipeline problem. things a difficulty. Serge, what do you hear from students? You know, is it at the point where you have conversations saying, you know, I love it here, I love UNM Law, I love what UNM Law is giving me, but I have no choice but to look other places. Are you, are you hearing that kind of feedback from students as well? Uh, actually, in the, the law field anyway, we have, have been understaffed, uh, under lawyered, I know sure. that's an oxymoron to many people, but yeah. in the state of New Mexico, <laughs> like we've historically just had a, a low number of lawyers relative to the, the, the need and the population. Sure. Um, I mean, as in many things, it's concentrated here in Albuquerque, right? The rural parts of the state that's are right. in desperate need of lawyers. But sure. uh, I'm not seeing a lot of our graduates leaving to go to, to Denver or necessarily you know, any of the this other likely mm -hmm. markets. Some of that is selection, right? In the admissions process, we want to. We select for people who want to stay in Albuquerque or New Mexico have a reason to stay here at any rate. But we're finding that the market is not oversaturated in the law profession. Now, of course, salaries are higher in Denver, sure. and I've had several. Yeah. You know, I have seen some students who said that. Yes, mm -hmm. I want to go to Denver. Or, um, like you're saying, if a couple of my students have said, yes, I'm interested in pursuing the exciting career of being a lawyer for the marijuana industry. Mm -hmm. Well, New Mexico is not the place for that. And so we lose them to a place that has opportunities in a field that is just exploding, right. and um, we're not able to compete with that. But we do yep. see that most, many, I, the majority of our students, our graduates, I should say, stick around. That's good to hear. That's good to hear, actually. Yeah, I like that's encouraging. You know, Diane, uh, Didi just brought up something that was interesting in that, in that journal piece, is, is the graph of who was coming in and going out. And if you added up everyone from starting age 40 up to going up to age 59, a tremendous amount of people have left here inside that age range that is not being made up by that 25 to 29 or 29 to 34 age bracket. So we're starting to get a little top heavy with oldsters, so to speak. I mean, I'm 59 this year, so, you know, so I'm in that bracket as well. What do you attribute that to, and how do we get around that? That's, that's I, a tough one. I think that uh, the Didi also touched on the fact that they're now stuck. Yeah. The people are working longer. Older people are working longer. Good point. So there's no openings for uh, in progression. Mm -hmm. That's right. And I, I believe it was uh, Dan who mentioned that is it a job you're looking for that pays the bills? Or are you looking for progression and advancement in a career? That's right. And when you get stuck in the middle, there, that's not a career. That, and, and I think people are seeing that. Young people go, oh, it's wonderful. I can go skiing. I can do all these kinds of things. So they come in, mm -hmm. and then they're suddenly faced with the fact that they have no place to go right. in their career. Right. So they move to. And the thing that I found most interesting was the comment that, and I believe it was also on the program that you were referring to with the young people who had returned, is family. Right. Denver is only a six-hour drive. You can still have That's your right. great job, the great entertainment, mm -hmm. the wonderful activity, vibrant city, mm -hmm. and still drive home for the weekend to see mom and dad. That's right. So I think that's why Denver is so much more attractive. I'll even add to that as well, guys. I mean, I feel like we have a constellation of cities to the north of us and west and east that's pulling in a lot of different directions. If you count Phoenix, if you count Austin to mm -hmm. the east, you know what I mean? There's a lot of places where we have leakage, Dan, where people are having trouble. So that brings us back to the point, again, I'm encouraged by the segment Gwyneth did with the, with the young people that want to stay. How do we encourage more of those young people to be like them? You know, it's sexy to say, oh, I'm leaving for Denver, you know, all that kind of a thing. It takes bravery well, I think, to stay where yeah, you are I, I, and, and but contribute. I think, I think the problem is, is that, you know, and speaking, Gina, you know, my son graduated college just a year ago. Mm -hmm. I got two more going to college. I got a junior in high school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think, you know, this is, 
far be it for me to be the guy that says the tough things. I think there's a perception that, you know, going down to downtown Denver, going down to 19th Street, going down to the baseball game to see the, the uh, Colorado Rockies. Mm -hmm. um, I could tell you walking around downtown Denver when I, when I would, would stay up there, much different feel, much different vibe than downtown Albuquerque. Right. Um, you know, so I think that I think there's a more inviting. You know, people feel like right. it's safer, it's more inviting. Right. There's more to do. Yep. Um, I think the opportunity for upward mobility, whether you're growing within the city of Denver or any of those outlying cities, you don't like Denver, you can go to Boulder. It's 45 minutes away, completely different. You don't like Albuquerque you're probably not going to go somewhere else in New Mexico and find more opportunity than you are right here in Albuquerque. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, the other thing that, that people aren't looking at that I think is starting to become a problem, we have a great airport. It's easy to get in and out of. It's becoming extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, you know, I'm finding it cheaper to fly from Albuquerque to Denver to take my flight from Denver to go outward than it is to fly out of Albuquerque. If I schedule a flight from Albuquerque, right. my tickets can be up to $200 more yep. one way than if I pay the $99 to go to Denver and plan my trip out of right. Denver. And a so, weird time. That's right. And I and I think right. and I think that it's I think that there's a lot of these outside factors that I think nowadays as I'm seeing, you know, <clears throat> when I was growing up, Gene, I think a lot of us on the table would agree, mm -hmm. um, except Didi, who's much younger, that we, we, you know, we looked for a job, we looked for a, a job that could move us into a career and look for that stability. Right. I don't think kids today are focused on that this is the job because they know they're going to change their career a few right. times. Right. They're going to change you know, their career. It's such but, a different world now. Yeah. And, and, and the kids that have stayed here have been, had to be really creative to really reinvent uh, new opportunities right. for themselves. And I give credit. Look at Meow Wolf in Santa Fe. Look at the 250 new jobs that are going to be created in a very adventurous way there. Look at all of the uh, young farmers who are at the farmer's market and are at the rail yards. Mm -hmm. And they are creating a new economy from the mm -hmm. bottom up. And uh, they are becoming self-sufficient. They're creating their own networks. It's a new world, but it's right. going to take a long time uh, to get established. That's a good what? point. Great finishing note. Hold, hold it there, Diane. My fault. We're going to move on. We have to end it there. And when we come back to the line, we'll talk about the challenges of recruiting doctors to rural communities here in New Mexico.